Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out at the range with a handgun. I've gotten a lot of requests to do a gauntlet test on. Now I've resisted picking one of these handguns up because honestly, it's just not a gun that I've ever been really interested in. But I've gotten so many requests to do a gauntlet test on it that I went ahead, found one on a distributor's website, got it for dealer cost, of course, through Copper Custom, and this is the handgun. Looks cool, doesn't it? <laughs> you probably want to see what's inside, right? Well, it's made in Italy, and you can see the Beretta logo there. Maybe you guys can guess what it is. Yep, it is the PX4 Storm. So this little guy is one of those guns I've handled many times at local gun shops and thought a lot about buying, but just never, no pun intended, pulled the trigger. I, uh, I like the way the gun feels. It feels very reminiscent of the Model 92, a handgun I do like, but it's this rotating locking mechanism, the rotating barrel, which you can see right here as it unlocks how it rotates versus a traditional browning action where the barrel and the slide move rearward together and the barrel tilts down and the slide comes rearward. Um, for the delay in this particular mechanism, that delay is the barrel rotating and then soon as it rotates out of its locking recess there, then the slide comes back. So I don't know how well this, this thing is going to do in the gauntlet test. Uh, Jason and I have been talking about it and uh, Jason's of the opinion and I think I may agree with him is that this thing's going to choke pretty hard. And I only say that because if you look right here on the ejection port, it's pretty much open. And if you watch how this gun cycles, see how it just kind of turns and it looks like it's, it, it's rotating this way. We, we're pretty convinced stuff is going to accumulate right here and it's just going to fling that stuff right back into the action. It can, it can you know, glob on right there as the slide comes to the rear. Now it's all inside the gun. We kind of predict the gun won't do well, but here's what's funny. Many times when we predict a gun won't do well, it actually does pretty well. So why are we out here today? Obviously, we're not going to gauntlet test. This isn't our gauntlet testing range. Why we're out here is one of the things that you guys have requested and something we've been doing is that we want to fire at least 500 rounds through a new handgun before we subject it to the gauntlet test. And I don't believe in break-ins, but because you guys felt pretty strongly about it and so many of you requested it, that's exactly what we do. So this is the brand new handgun. This is how it ships. And, uh, you know, you can see the gun here. Literally, we're taking it out of the box the first time today. Some of the back straps that are replaceable, I never use those. This little spacer to keep the box from crushing on itself. A magazine, a loader. There's a magazine of the gun, and then your little lock. Underneath here, you got all your owner's manual, registration card, and things like that. All right, so the ammunition that we brought out, we've been doing some organizing at the... Mac ammo storage facility. And uh, this is just some hodgepodge stuff that we have laying around. We have some brown bear I've had for years. We just found this stuff everywhere, guys. Just kind of sorting through what ammo's available. We have some of this Winchester 9mm. This is kind of their uh, NATO ammo. And then we have some of my favorite, the USA Forged. I'll never buy this stuff again. It'll be interesting to see if this chokes the Beretta because this has choked just about every handgun I've ever put it in. We got some Blazer Brass. We have a bunch of Federal Luger range ammo, all sorts of stuff. Agula, that's not quite a full box. So we have a whole bunch of weird stuff, some ZQI. We're just going to run all this ammo through the, the gun, try to get to that 500 round round count so that we can then do a gauntlet test on it because, again, you guys have requested it. All right, let's load up some magazines and start doing some shooting. This is just going to be a range day video. We're going to both be shooting me and Jason, and uh, we're just going to share our thoughts on the PX4, what we think about it, get some rounds through it, and then the next time you see it, it's going to be getting dunked in the mud, sand, dirt, and water. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, let's uh, fire the first magazine out of the PX4 Storm. I have the Brown Bear uh, steel-cased ammunition. We have, what, we have uh, five magazines loaded up, one, two, three, four, five, and we have 15 rounds in them. My OCD won't allow me to load 17 rounds. I'm doing it in groups of five, so 15 it is. And uh, I've not done anything to the gun. I have not put any CLP or anything on it. Just shooting it right out of the box. It's not going to hurt it, so don't get all twisted in knots over the fact I haven't cleaned or lubricated the gun. I did tear it down, made sure it was good to go, no bore obstructions. Now let's fire uh, that first shot double action. We got our challenge target downrange, a little over seven yards away. Trigger is pretty nice on this thing. Recoil impulse is really smooth. Hmm. 
actually kind of like the way the handgun shoots. It's really, really mild. Now this wolf stuff though, I'm sorry, brown bear stuff, isn't real hot stuff. The controls are natural. Um, you know, it has the selector lever like a 92 with the safety lever, uh, not a selector lever, safety lever up here on the top of the slide. So uh, yeah, it's kind of neat. So when you grab it, it's contoured so that you kind of pull up on the levers versus pushing down on them and accidentally turning your gun off. So those little wings are kind of nice when you pull it and it naturally wants to turn the safety off. Let's try that double action trigger pull again. Yeah, that's a nice double action trigger pull. It's just smooth, very easy to use. Shooting a nice tight little group down there. Yeah, I like the way this thing shoots. Yeah, all right. Shoot out a little further. They're shooting at some rock out there. Actually, I think they're just leaves. So, double taps are easy to pull off. The gun shoots really, really smooth. And let's just do a mag dump. Yeah. Not too shabby, guys. Shoots really, really nice. The ergonomics are pretty good. It's a polymer lower, replaceable back straps right here. Wow, that's hot. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that sucker gets hot. But um, yeah, it feels really, really good. Now that heat's transferring down to the grip because it's all polymer. Has a non-beveled magwell. Feels pretty good. It's a full-size pistol. Standard sights, just a three-dot arrangement. I'm sure you can put other sights on it. I just want to check. So it's kind of interesting. Just like the Model 92, there's this little pin that pops up. And so I asked Beretta why that pin was there. And it kind of made sense after they told me. So this is your firing pin safety. As I'm pulling the trigger, you'll notice that little pin goes up. That means the firing pin safety has been disengaged. If for whatever reason the gun gets dirty, say like in a gauntlet test, anything interferes with that firing pin safety and it's stuck in the deactivated mode and the gun is not safe to carry, if I'm not pulling the trigger and I run my finger across the top of the, the, top of the slide and I feel that pin protruding, I know the gun is not safe to be carried. And that's why you find this on most of the Beretta pistols. I didn't know that until I'd asked. It's pretty interesting. So that's why it's there. While Jason's loading up that uh, Winchester stuff, in case you haven't seen the video before, this uh, Winchester USA forged, we have had nothing but bad luck with it. Now it could just be I got a bad lot. Uh, this is from that same lot, but literally guys, this is steel cased ammunition made by Winchester. It has caused malfunctions in every single gun I fired it in. And let's, uh, let's see if the little Beretta can actually cycle it. Jason's over there struggling to learn how to use a uh, up Lula. Oh, I know let's uh, let's see how he's doing. <laughs> if you guys use YouTube quite a bit, you'll probably know that many of your content creators have talked about the demonetization of YouTube and that demonetization has hit gun channels particularly hard. Anybody that produces content that YouTube deems to be objectionable, things like guns, knives, airsoft, paintball, whatever, 
uh, they've demonetized us. That means we don't earn a living or even earn a paycheck really from YouTube anymore. We get next to nothing. That's why many of us have turned to Patreon to keep our channels moving forward and growing. It's very expensive to maintain a large channel that produces content regularly. Every week we're producing content. So I ask that you guys consider to swing by and joining us over at Patreon. Become a member at Patreon. And in exchange for that, we give you guys blowout deals at Copper Custom. We do original blog posts, behind the scenes stuff, do giveaways from things from uh, various videos that we've shot. And we also, once or twice a year, we'll bring a random patron out to come out and shoot video with us and hang out at Copper Custom. So please consider swinging by and becoming a patron supporter, not only of the Military Arms channel, but any content creator that you regularly watch see if they have a patron uh, page or account and consider becoming a patron of theirs as well. Thanks guys. So we loaded up some of this Winchester steel, 115 grain steel case stuff. Uh, as Tim had mentioned, a lot of this stuff had failed in a lot of handguns and even some carbines. I think even the uh, uh, Scorpion Evo had trouble loading this Winchester stuff and which we've never had a problem with that gun before. So I got uh, five magazines loaded up with it. We'll see how it runs out of this Beretta. So far, so good. Just grab another mag. Just say, I like the feel of this pistol. Still going strong. So far, so good. Give that double action a try. Not bad. Hundred percent functional with that Winchester stuff. I'm surprised, truly. So far, I'm liking this handgun. We'll see what the gauntlet does to it. This little PX4 Storm feels nicely balanced. I like the slide release here. It's nice and big. Notice it's textured on the top. And why am I pointing that out? Because it's both a slide stop and a slide release. How do I know that? Well, it's through deductive reasoning, guys. Look where the texturing is. It's on top. Why would they put the texturing there? It's because they want you to get traction as you push down. So yeah, I use it as both a slide stop and a slide release. The gun has four slide, uh, slide serrations. I'm not a big fan of those. I don't manipulate my firearm from that position at all, ever. Uh, if I'm gonna do that, I pull from back here. I just don't like getting my hand that close to the muzzle. But uh, the controls are very nice, intuitive. I might say even for my large hands, Putting the safety on is easy to do, but trying to hit it and knock it off is a little bit harder because it's kind of cut away here, but uh, it's still easy enough to do. I really do like though that slide stop. It stays out of the way. I don't get, I don't accidentally ride it with my thumb while I'm shooting and get false locks by pushing up or not getting the slide to lock open on the last shot fired. And the sights are decent, not night sights, but the three dot sights are nice. The, uh, the ergonomics again are spot on. This is some of the uh, federal 115 grain red box range ammo. Nothing special about it. I like how smooth the operation is on the handgun.
see how flat that thing shoots guys it really really does shoot nice and flat again another eh, 15 or so rounds of the federal yeah i missed one there jerking the trigger now we got a couple more magazines of that winchester stuff which is working in this little guy which again we've not even put a drop of lube on the gun yet Not bad. This little gun runs like a sewing machine. Look at the ejection pattern on it. It uh, ejects nice and smoothly, even with this Winchester uh, really kind of low quality ammo. And we got one more magazine of it. That time the ejection was all over the place. I guess it looked a little bit smoother with the Federal American Eagle stuff, which I just spewed all over the table. All right, let's clean up my mess and load some more magazines. Let's tear down the PX4 Storm and see what makes this little guy tick. First of all, you want to remove the magazine, which is already removed from the handgun. I'm going to lock the slide to the rear, check the chamber, make sure that it's empty, and it is. Now I'm going to let the slide go home and decock the pistol. Here on the front, you have a takedown lever. It's very similar to, but dissimilar as well, to a Glock. Two little bars on both sides, you're gonna pull them down, and with the hammer forward, with the gun decocked, you pull down on this, and see how the, the slide just kinda of springs forward a little bit under the recoil springs pressure? Now you can separate the two assemblies. All right, that's what it looks like on the inside, all polymer with, of course, the metal components being the trigger components and the slide rails. Over here, we have the rotating barrel assembly. So what I'm gonna do is pull back slightly on this little block and lift up, and then this comes apart. And this comes apart yet again. So now you have your recoil spring, a little buffer here, and your block assembly. Set that aside, and now your barrel can be dropped out of the slide like so. So it's fairly simple to, to, uh, to disassemble. This is completely different than the, um, than the grand power. The grand power I found to be very difficult to disassemble. To put it back together, just put your barrel in, make sure that you get it lined up right. You can check that just simply by looking at the ejection port. Now I'm gonna take my block, put the recoil spring back in it, set the spring in place, push the block back and down until it kind of clicks into place that and now you just put the two halves back together and just pull it sharply to the rear and it will lock itself back into place so a very simple handgun to tear down and to maintain the px4 storms rotating barrel isn't unique to that handgun there have been other handgun designs in history that have used a rotating barrel that actually predate the px4 storm the colt 2000 for example yes i have one of these hideous machines i uh just had to own one. I'm a gun collector. It's an oddball. It was a complete commercial flop. Um, it was a collaboration effort between Reed Knight, Colt, and I can't remember who else might have been involved in the project. But um, yeah, it's a striker fired handgun. It was designed, I believe, for military trials at the time. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what the, the whole concept was. It spawned this gun uh, being produced around 2000. It does have a 15 round magazine right here. And if you'll notice, watch the barrel as the slide draws to the rear. See how it rotates and locks. Very similar to the PX4 Storm. The trigger on this thing is absolutely horrendous. It has one big control here, and that's your slide stop and slide release. It uh, has a polymer frame, it is striker fired, but it's a, a double action striker system, so I can pull the trigger as many times as I want. So if you're uh, an advocate of double strike or second strike capability, the Colt 2000 would give it to you, but I do not recommend buying one of these and using it for self-defense. There are much better guns on the market. There's a reason why this thing flopped. The ergonomics are okay, but you have to admit this thing's just kind of an ugly duckling as compared to the, the PX4 Storm. I think the Storm is actually a really good looking pistol. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys that 
There is a gun that predates the Storm with the rotating barrel, and I'm sure there's one that predates this one as well. Have some of the brown bear ammo loaded into the Colt 2000. Again, the trigger on this thing is horrific. I mean, it is just the nastiest trigger in the world. It pulls straight back. You'll, you'll see how it moves. It, it'll, it'll pull straight back the whole trigger mechanism, and it's a really long, creepy trigger, and it won't fire until it's almost all the way up against the frame. Oh yeah, and watch my finger. So this is where the trigger resets. It's fully pulled right now, okay? Watch this. Right there, reset, full release. I have to completely release this incredibly long trigger pull to have the trigger reset. Again, guys, this is one of the worst guns in modern history. I think the concept there was is you're getting the safety of a double action revolver with a semi-automatic pistol that was kind of a thing back then although it was a thing that was being phased out that was more of a 90s thing but let me see if i can show you guys how this works okay the gun is clear watch watch the trigger as i pull it see how see how the whole trigger moves straight back it doesn't have a hinge point up here like you would think it would the whole trigger pulls back and it breaks right there <laughs> completely up against the frame and then reset watch this Right there's reset and that's full release. <laughs> what a horrible handgun, I love it. Let's go back to shooting the storm. We had a partial box of this Blazer aluminum case stuff. This ammunition has been known to choke many a handgun. This is what it looks like. And uh, yeah, that's the reason I don't have a whole lot of it because it's not the best ammunition in the world. 115 grain ball. This little Beretta has eaten everything else we fed it this afternoon. So let's see if it'll cycle a magazine of this stuff. Guys, this thing has eaten everything that we have stuck in its magazine. So, and we've not even put a drop of oil on it this afternoon. Color me impressed. Nice shooting, and it seems to be pretty darn reliable. It's gauntlet ready. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to wrap things up this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed coming out to the range with us as we broke in. I don't believe in break-in periods, but I'm doing it for you guys. We broke in the PX4 pistol. In the process of doing that, of firing 500 rounds this afternoon, I have come to really like this handgun. I like the ergonomics, I like how it shoots, I like the trigger, the sights work well. It's actually a pretty darn nice handgun. I'm uh, kind of surprised I haven't given it a chance before this. So anyway, next step is to take this handgun back to the shop, clean it up, get it lubricated, get it ready to go. In the next couple of weeks, we will subject it to the gauntlet. Let's see how well it does. Jason and I kind of have our own beliefs on what the gun's gonna do in the gauntlet, but let's see what it actually does. And then uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Let you guys be the judge of how well it performs. Guys, I really appreciate you supporting us here at the Military Arms Channel, but I would also ask that you support the NRA. Right now we're in a fight to roll back existing gun laws. I know many of you would argue with me whether or not we have a friendly White House, Senate, and House right now, but we do have new leadership at the NRA. We do have Republican-controlled House and Senate and White House, and presumably the Republicans are pro-gun. Um, you know, it is what it is. But what I can say is we have new leadership at the NRA, and we have a unique opportunity to try to turn back some of these gun laws. Join the NRA. Use the link down below. Spread that link around. That link is special because that link brings me money when you become a member or renew a membership. I take that money and I give it to a 503 nonprofit organization called Hero Hunt, and Hero Hunt helps our wounded warriors and first responders. It gets them in the field, gets them back into life and enjoying themselves. I've been in the field with them. They're great guys. Again, guys, please use that link, become an NRA, NRA member, and get in the fight. Also, if you'd like to support us at the channel, swing by and check out Copper Custom. It's coppercustom.com. It's our online store. We have a lot of great products at great prices. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all those years of support. And now, it's time to fire off the last 15 or so rounds and go clean this gun up and get it ready for the gauntlet. Yep, I like it. Let's see how well she does.